interesting poem. It's a really vivid collection of images in an extended metaphor. Um, and the narrative of the poem concerns a young girl who is, um, I think she's been out for a day with her friend to the beach. She wasn't allowed to do that. So she's trying to sneak back into the house um, by climbing up and going in through an upstairs window. Um, there are two characters in the poem, that girl and then a secretary who's in a factory over the road watching her do this. Um, and then there are two minor characters in the poem who are talked about, so the girl's mother and the girl's friend that she's been to the beach with. Um, and it's a really interesting poem, particularly in its structure, as well as that vivid imagery, because it's enjammed all the way through. And in fact, if you look carefully at the poem, there are actually only four sentences. Um, and we'll talk about that a little bit more as we go through. Now, the poem starts in Medea Res. It's like we've been dropped into the action and we can see what's happening. Um, and there are very few poems to me that make you feel more like a camera person watching things unfold than this one. Once she is halfway up there, crouched in their bikini on the porch roof of her family's house, trembling. So Copish uses almost each line to have a different idea or image in them. Um, and all the way through, as I said, there's this extended metaphor in which the house represents her childhood and the outside represents adulthood. And the girl begins the poem um, in a liminal space, of course, where she is neither in the house nor outside it um, in Medea Res. So we're kind of in this liminal space with her, which gives us um, sympathy um, and an interest in the young girl. She's halfway there, so she's neither adult nor child, and she's crouched in her bikini. Now a bikini is quite an adult, um, sexualized type of clothing. So again, you've got this sense of a person in adolescence who, in the words of Britney Spears, is not a girl, but not yet a woman. And she's crouching, so she's not entirely comfortable. There's a kind of um, reductive quality to her position there. She's crouching, almost trying to hide herself. And she's on the porch roof of her family's house, trembling. So that present tense verb there um, really gives us a vivid sense of her fear. And this is all happening right now. We are there with her. And the lines are enjammed all the way through, which shows her anxiety. She knows that the one thing she must not do is to think of the narrow windowsill, the sharp drop off the stair, well, she must keep her mind. So we're following her kind of train of thought as we go through the poem. And there's a sense that she's in danger and she's in a plight because of how high up she is but also because her mother doesn't trust her. It says further down that she's far away from the mother who does not trust her daughter with a key. Earlier on though, it talks about how um, she, as she tries to get back into the window, she'll reach with the length of her whole body leaning into the warm flank of the house. Now your flank is kind of the, the side and the top of your leg. It's an almost animal imagery, but it's a suggestion that she sees the house or the people within it, perhaps her mother, as comforting still. So again, she's between this sense of wanting to be independent and this sense of wanting to be on her own. Um, and, and sorry, she's between being independent and she's between wanting to still be part of the family and be comforted by her mother. First, she steadies herself, still crouching, the grains of asphalt hot beneath her toes and fingertips, a square of petrified beach. So there's a pun here. It's talking about the asphalt, um, which is made out of a substance um, rather like the beach, the grit of the beach that she would have been on, on a pebbly beach. And it's petrified, so it's it's dried out, um, but it also represents her kind of terror um, at being stuck out of the house and being afraid of being caught or being afraid of falling. So 
in, it's a really clever image because in one way it exaggerates how frightened she is but also there's a gentle humour in there through the pun because this is a poem of childhood nostalgia in a sense isn't it um, although it's it's presenting an occasion of fear it's an image that a lot of adults will relate to these kind of childhood rebellion notice as well how the enjambment all the way through narrow window sill the sharp drop off the stairway um, exacerbates her sense of fear I'll just write that down for you because it's in John Pemont all the way through she must keep her mind on the friend with whom she's half in love with so he's waiting for her so even this kind of first love because of the continued enjambment makes it seem perilous a, a risk to be taken um, the flimsy hole punch aluminium lever towards which so continued enjambment there and it flips between the peril of trying to get getting back into the house and the peril of being in love for the first time so the enjambment works to again show that she's in this liminal space she's in this moment between childhood where her mother would be comforting and adulthood um, where her mother um, is is more distrustful of her and furthermore notice that the window is still open to her at this stage she's still kind of welcome in the house in that place of childhood and that although she's wearing a bikini she has a tiny breast so small she can rest it lightly on her thighs she can crouch down and that makes it seem like she's almost in a kind of fetal position and of course the tiny breast suggests that she's not yet quite womanly and there we get the end of the first sentence it says what can she know of the way the world admits us less and less the more we grow so you've got this um, rhetorical question here that the narrative voice is posing kind of to itself to the reader and it's summing up really the first part of the poem of how can a young person understand the transition between childhood to adulthood while they're in it it's only when you're looking back like this that you understand um, what that journey is like so then the writer resumes um their discussion and focusing now on kind of both the girls that they can see and they are lit from within, within as if they've got a, a kind of heavenly halo a light around them the the vitality of youth is shown by this light that comes from inside them the hair and the gold stud earrings in the first one's ears again jewelry being indicative indicative of adulthood um and this light makes them seem almost sort of angelic and vivacious for now the house exists only for them set back as it is from the long grey eye of the street so the street there is kind of personified as almost like a sort of dull sleepy animal that's watching them have this exciting um, adventure the workers about their business in the drab electro plating factory over the road now drab means kind of dull and dowdy we could take that word literally in that when you look at the factory it looks like a really dull looking building um, but here and then up here as well when she talks about the petrified beach i think you've got um, a sense of transferred epithet or hyperlage it's the same thing just a, a different term to describe the same thing and it's when you take the feelings of a protagonist and they're almost too big for the people to feel so they get pushed into the objects around them so up here the girl is so afraid that that, that feeling of fear goes into the asphalt roof around her and here the people in the factory are so bored that that boredom seems to kind of seep into the factory and notice as well how copus really effectively uses enjambement all the way through here to suggest that there is a link between the teenage girls and the people in this factory and there's a contrast here though of enjambement electroplating factory over the road far too most far from the flush faced secretary so the words the language of the poem suggest that they are the girls are far away from what the secretary in the factory over the road is like but the structure of the poem suggests otherwise 
so the structure the enjambement suggests a link and notice that you get that repeated f sound far far flush faced and i would suggest that that gives the poem a kind of dreamy um kind of hesitant quality because the secretary is having a bit of a daydream that repeated f sound looks um and she's having a daydream who with her head full of the evening class she plans to take now notice here we have got in jambamont but but look where copus decides to split the line because it goes from full of the evening class she plans to take so there's a suggestion there perhaps that as the line breaks there that might suggest that this class isn't going to happen so maybe the secretary is there to form a juxtaposition with the girls who've got everything in front of them and all these hopes and the glinting light um even though they're afraid they've got everything in front of them and this woman is nearer to middle age and her hopes and dreams aren't going to come about or the trip of a lifetime looks up now so again notice where the line break occurs what is she looking at from the stirring omens of an astrology common so she's reading her stars in the paper stirring omens is really interesting because um obviously astrology dates from the classical period and people used to tell their fortunes by literally stirring the guts of an animal um, and seeing um, you know what futures they could discern in that so it's almost making the secretary have um, a kind of witch-like quality as she watches them fortune telling she is their future so if they were to look at her they would foresee their own future um, she's rather like an oracle, which is the name of the people who would tell fortunes by looking at viscera or blood and guts. So now she looks up and she sees at a girl, 13 if she's a day, standing in next to nothing in the driveway opposite. So she is looking at the friend of the girl who's climbing up on the roof. So she provides the link between the girl on the roof and the other girl. Um, and you can hear her shock in the tone 13 if she's a day in that figure of speech there and that dates the girls if you like as to what copers think is this cusp between adolescence and adulthood there we go so you've got the whole picture now in terms of structure the poem is kind of zoomed out from the girls standing on the windowsill um to back to the secretary in the factory and then forward again to the friend shielding her eyes to gaze up at a pale calf a silver anklet and five neat shimmering oyster painted toenails of an outstretched foot so you get this really sensuous image which focuses on um the the other girl's bracelet around her ankle her pretty toenails um, and her pale calf so there again there's a suggestion of romance between these two um, teenage girls and they catch the sunlight briefly so there's a double meaning there isn't there that not only um, is there a quick flash of sun against her shiny toenails but also the idea that this moment of youth is really brief Again, they are in a liminal space, which won't last long. They're in a state of transition. Like the flash of armaments before dropping gracefully into the shade of the house. Now that's really interesting because she's comparing the flash of toenails um, of the girl as to kind of shells dropping on a, bla on a battlefield and just seeing the quick flash of them. So she's almost suggesting that the way that the girl is wearing makeup or jewellery is weaponising her. So she's seeing femininity, I think, in quite a combative way. But at this point, um, there, it is just a flash. You know, her toenails are just a little fragment of the, the armour that she may need when she's a fully adult woman. So Copish uses enjambement all the way through. The structure of the poem 
often works in opposition with some of the description in the language of it. Um, she does that to show this kind of journey 